This presentation is about how to prevent laminitis in your horse. And we do have some good news for you. In 1984, when I started the Animal Health Foundation, we had a print ad that showed a girl with a horse that had laminitis. And the caption on the ad was, she doesn't understand why her horse has laminitis, but then nobody does. Well, now I do know why that horse had laminitis. We have done research over the last quarter of a century, which has led to the development of the different pathways that cause laminitis. We're understanding more and more about the disease. So today, there's a lot more that can be done to eliminate the disease before it starts. To review, we told you that there were three pathways. The first pathway we talked about was the enzyme-activated pathway. The second pathway was the hormone activated from high levels of insulin. And the third pathway was in horses that bear all their weight on one limb, called support limb laminitis. The first pathway, which involves the activation of protease enzymes, has a number of diseases which are associated with the onset of it. Preventing horses from getting these diseases is the simplest way to not deal with this disease. The first and the most common thing that we're called for in horses are horses that break into the grain and eat excessive amounts of grain. This is easily prevented by securing the feed room so that horses can't break in and gorge on grain. It's one of the most common problems that we have and I would urge every one of you listening to this video to go check your feed room, put some sort of a self-closing apparatus on the door so that it locks itself and keep your feed well secured. We know that horses that have any kind of large gastrointestinal upset causing diarrhea will result in the activation of these protease enzymes. This can be avoided by feeding horses a diet that is more forage based, using less grain in the diet. We know that grain diets tend to produce the types of organism in the GI tract that are more associated with the development of the diarrhea. So feeding a horse a forage based diet with minimal amounts of grain will minimize the possibility that he's going to develop diarrhea. We know that mares that retain their placentas oftentimes develop this form we can eliminate this by actively and quickly treating these mares before the retained placenta is retained for any length of time and then prophylactically giving them drugs to prevent laminitis. Horses that are exposed to excessively high temperatures and develop hyperthermia can be avoided by monitoring the environmental conditions that the horses are in. Horses that are worked excessively hard that develop extreme cases of myositis can lead to this form of laminitis. So preventing work that is that strenuous for the animal. Exposing the horse to black walnut shavings can be eliminated by just monitoring the bedding that's put into the animal's stall. Avoiding conditions which produce excessive stress in the animal, like prolonged lengthy hauling of horses. All of these conditions, including working horses on extremely hard surfaces which produce excessive concussion in their feet, these are all the conditions which predispose horses, not all the time, but some of the time to develop laminitis. If your horse is afflicted by one of these conditions, you still have another chance to prevent laminitis, and that's by icing their feet, because it's been shown in experiments that horses having ice placed on their feet up to the mid cannon bone and all four feet can avoid laminitis even in the throngs of one of these predisposing causes. So if you know your horse has one of these conditions going on, you can actively ice their feet until this condition has passed and prevent the horse from getting laminitis. In this manner, you have to act proactively. You have to be thinking ahead of time. Is this one of the conditions that I know might cause my horse to develop laminitis? Do I want to be really safe? If I do, I'll just go ahead and ice his feet. There's been absolutely no evidence to show that icing horses' feet at any time for any length of time is detrimental or harmful to them. It has been shown, again, in many experiments that have been run, that icing the feet will prevent this form of laminitis. 
the form that is caused by the activation of the enzymes within their feet. The way this works is by keeping their feet cold, it reduces the metabolic rate within the foot, the protease enzymes are not activated, or the trigger factor doesn't work. We don't know exactly how it works, but we do know that icing the feet will prevent laminitis from occurring. The second pathway that we talked about through the abnormal levels of hormone within the animal system, in particular the high levels of insulin in their bloodstream causing laminitis, can often be detected before laminitis actually occurs. Many of these animals have a very characteristic look. I've told you that two diseases cause this, equine Cushing's disease and equine metabolic syndrome. Equine Cushing's disease horses oftentimes have very abnormal long hair coats that tell you that something's going on in their body. The equine metabolic syndrome horses oftentimes have very characteristic looks and fat deposits. They're often the horses that have very crusty necks and have fat deposits on top of their withers and on top of their rumps. A lot of people don't think these horses are overweight, but they are because the fat deposits are so abnormal in them. The crusty neck is the one thing that stands out amongst horses that are prone to do this. But still, there are other symptoms that your farrier or your hoof caretaker can tell if he's watching their hooves closely. They form rings on the exterior part of their foot. There is actually separation that occurs in the sole of the foot between the white line and the external hoof wall. Small amounts of CD toe will start to develop before the horse ever develops laminitis. Oftentimes there are small areas of hemorrhage seen in these areas. These horses, if this is occurring, are suffering from abnormal levels of insulin, but not high enough and there hasn't been enough damage to cause the horse to develop a full-blown case of laminitis. If this is seen and tested and the insulin level is corrected, the horse will never get laminitis. If you maintain the horse in a normal weight state, uh, you can minimize the amount of insulin that the horse has in their system. So diet and exercise are the premier things that will reverse this whole process in this animal, and if you catch it early, he'll never suffer from laminitis. Surprisingly enough, many of these horses will normalize their foot growth after the insulin is corrected, and within a year's time, you can't really tell that the horse ever had an abnormal insulin level. The feet will actually return to normal. So I encourage you that have these horses take a good look at their feet, get their insulin levels checked, see what's going on in them, and put them on a diet, exercise them. If you need medicine, that's available to also help correct the situation. If you're unfortunate enough to have a horse that becomes three-legged from a severe injury, you need to be thinking about laminitis right away in the foot that he's standing on opposite the injured foot. Now, there's several methods that have been employed recently some people have taken horses after they've had fractures and are recovering and they walk them every few hours to make them unload this weight-bearing foot. Some people feel like that may be a simple way to try and avoid laminitis in this foot. Allowing the horse to become recumbent or even encouraging him to lay down most of the time, it's been my experience over the years, the cases that I had that were prolonged three-legged horses, the ones that laid down didn't develop laminitis in the opposite foot. You can also put the horse in a sling and keep him from bearing weight on the opposite leg that way and give him a break off of it so he doesn't continue to bear weight constantly on the leg. All of these things have been tried and there's a lot that we don't know about what's actually causing this form of the disease. But the idea that you, you're out front and you're proactive and you're trying to prevent this from occurring is where you need to be if you have one of these animals. This information that we've given you is just a good start on how to prevent laminitis. If we really want to know how to prevent laminitis completely, we have to understand the complete mechanism. And that's going to involve much more research into all the different methods that are causing the disease. Today we're filming this here at the Homestead Veterinary Hospital Cemetery. This whole field is filled with horses Many of them died of this disease. It's a sad place. 
Part of why I do this is because of these horses. I hope you'll consider helping us try and free the horse so that we really can prevent this disease in horses. Consider making a donation to the Animal Health Foundation. Help us free the horse of this disease. Thank you.